Here in Southern California, there are thousands and thousands of people who suffer silently from terrible depression, and they've given up on ever feeling better. Hello, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Espinosa. And I'm Rick Reef. Could the anesthetic ketamine be the answer, or is it being overhyped as a miracle drug? It's not FDA approved for treating depression. Jeff is bipolar and has suffered from depression that has stolen much of his life. Jeff has been hospitalized at psychiatric facilities, taken every kind of antidepressant and mood stabilizer. Nothing worked. Somehow he was able to consistently stay employed, most recently as an NFL football analyst for the Sky Network. Then about a year and a half ago, everything fell apart for Jeff, and he lost his job. He was suicidal, so overwhelmed with despair that he couldn't even drive or leave his house. I would sit in front of the fireplace and stretch and try and not feel crazy and listen to music. All I can do is listen to music. I couldn't watch TV. It was too complicated. It was too stressful. Seeing other people's realities was so confusing. It was overwhelming. And no matter how loving my amazing wife is, you're still alone. Ketamine has been around forever, but this is a new use for depression. It has not been FDA approved for this mental disorder, although there are several clinical trials being researched. Ketamine is widely known on the streets as a club drug, oftentimes used to get high and euphoric. Jeff found it worked. It's been remarkable. It's, uh, the look in my wife's face, she looked at me, she saw the smile, and she got the biggest smile I've ever seen in my life on her face is tears poured down her face. It's immoral to withhold ketamine from the general public. There's so much misunderstanding about this and it's helped me so much to feel good for the first time in a year and a half. It's really, really cool. Um, joining us, of course, to discuss depression, Dr. David Chu. David is a psychiatrist who practices at clinics and hospitals throughout Orange County. Also joining us is another Dr. David, Dr. David Feifel. He's a professor of psychiatry at UC San Diego, has treated over 200 patients with ketamine, including Maggie, who you just saw. Yeah. Doctors, welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Depression. I mean, I was just asking Rick before we started, mm -hmm. have you ever felt depressed? Oh, of course I felt depressed. Sadness, I, I wouldn't right? consider myself a victim of, right. of depression, but yeah, I think, and that's, I guess that's an important thing. Yeah. Everybody at some time or another is yeah. depressed. So what, How do you define when depression? you sit, when you're dealing with depression, yeah. doctor, what, what, what is that, uh, what's that really like? Well, you know, I think it's really important to differentiate the mm -hmm. colloquial term that we right. use, you know, oh gosh, my, my sports team lost, I'm so depressed, from the medical condition, clinical depression, major depressive disorder, or bipolar disorder, which can have depression. Those are different things, and it's really unfortunate that we use the same language term. The, 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 the second one, the one that people, you know, like Maggie uh, exhibit, that's a, that's a, a, a brain condition mm -hmm. where your capacity to experience pleasure and joy and motivation, there's, a, there's re circuits in the brain that, that are responsible for that. They literally shut down, so there's 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 nothing, uh, you know, pleasurable in life, and and it just seems like an endless uh, series of, uh, of of chores. To so obviously, if there's this excitement over ketamine, that would suggest to me that other things that are being used aren't that effective, or or there's a lot of people that the existing drugs don't work for. What what's com what's been commonly used for depression? Well, the the, the standard. Uh, First-line treatments are uh, talk therapy. You know, there's, uh, there, there are therapies that, uh, that are very effective, like cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, and even more commonly, uh, medications that are approved for depression, antidepressant medications. You know, there's, uh, for the past 50 years, I think that's really what's been dominating. Mm -hmm. And these medications are, are really great for many people, but unfortunately, for many people, people, they don't work. So we have a large group of people who just we call as uh, treatment refractory or treatment resistant. Yeah, so, that's right. We were talking about that yeah, in the right. green room, uh, treatment resistant depression. Is that right? right? Um, there is still no real uh, consensus as, as to how to define that, is there, in the medical community? Yeah, well, the, you know, we, uh, the, the, the specific numbers of how many antidepressants you need to try and fail is a little controversial, but basically uh, it's recognized that if you've gone through 
uh, two to four antidepressant medications and either you don't tolerate them or they, you've given them enough time at the right dose and they don't work, you are then considered treatment resistant. So, so then, Dr. Chu, I guess with, uh, with uh, ketamine, it's uh, not, not being FDA approved at this point. Right. Number one means you're going to pay. A, there's no insurance, it's so expensive. it's going to cost a whole lot of money. I'm assuming some of these other treatments mm -hmm. are FDA approved, right? That's correct. Uh, and from a doctor's standpoint, does it open you up to liability? I mean, you just have to have a whole lot of malpractice insurance or something if you're going to give somebody a drug like ketamine for a, uh, uh, for a treatment that is approved by the FDA? Well, I think there are a lot of doctors who are apprehensive about it because, you know, this is a drug that, uh, you know, first of all, is not, you know, they're not familiar with in their training. It's anesthesiologists who are familiar with it because they use it for a different purpose. And it's, uh, it's also a drug that's, that's uh, a used recreational on the street. But there's lots of good evidence now out of the uh, 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 National Institute of Health and many of the major academic centers in randomized studies that show that ketamine has some properties, antidepressant properties, that we've never seen with anything else. One of the things that it does that we just have nothing uh, like it uh, in, in this respect is the speed at which it can improve depression. Not just the fact that it can work in people who fail other things, but the fact that uh, in some people, it, it works within 24 hours. But so Dr. Feifold, so how long, if I have a treatment of ketamine, how long will it last in my body? Everyone's differently, right? I mean, I could take a Tylenol and I get drowsy and you don't, right? Is, can we say, generally speaking, it'll last two months? And also, is there really enough scientific data that shows long term? Have we been looking at ketamine to treat depression for 20 years as opposed to just five years to say it's safe? Well, with regards to the, the duration, that is one of the, 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 the issues of the, that we're struggling with in the field um, and working to kind of uh, try to improve because uh, a single treatment of ketamine can last anywhere from a day to uh, a, a month or more. Mm -hmm. And it really uh, varies from person to person, and we don't know. So if somebody comes in and gets a wonderful response... Yeah. Um, but it lasts a day. Unfortunately, that's not very viable. We can't we can't maintain them by giving them injections every day. So in our clinic, we need uh, people to have an effect that lasts at least one to two weeks in order for us to create a regimen where they can return for booster shots. Of course, what when you when you say that, I'm thinking, wow, uh, how about addiction? I mean, if you're if you're doing this on a monthly basis or a weekly basis or whatever. Uh, it, are there concerns, and is that one of the things that's being studied? I mean, do people become addicts on this on, on this drug? It's a good question, um, and uh, the short answer is that it's a it's a, it's a theoretical concern. Those of us who've been doing it, I've been doing it now for six years at UC San Diego under the approval of our of our of our pharmacy and therapeutics committee. Um, we've not seen any sign of addiction at all. It, it, uh, this is a kind of a drug that. Um, it, it generally, unlike opioids, which are, as you know, uh, you know, can be very uh, addicting, your body can be very dependent on, really doesn't produce uh, addiction. It's, the it, same reaction. Exactly. Dr. Chu, uh, but interesting. So you've been doing administering yeah. ketamine for six years. And Dr. Chu, you don't see, um, you're not really doing the same thing. Why not? Well, because it's considered an evasive procedure. Uh, in psychiatry, we try to avoid invasive procedures, if at all possible. Uh, but obviously, you know, some patients do become treatment resistant. And uh, when we run out of options, this is something we may consider. Now, the, the biggest problem is, like you said, insurance coverage. So there is not good access to it uh, at first because there's not anybody doing that in Orange County. Uh, but also the insurance is, is not covering, so it's almost cost prohibitive for a lot of our patients. Yeah. But are you concerned about the data as well? I mean, that we don't have long-range studies. Yeah scientifically establishing that it, you won't become addicted. It, it's not bad for your nervous system. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, like any uh, experimental treatment, um, such as marijuana, you know, there will be case studies where people have really robust response. Uh, however, there will be those who do not. But this is just one option that we have available, I think, uh, we keep it on repertoire. But obviously, it's not going to be our first line treatment. Yeah. Right. As what what are the two or three things you would say are are your biggest concerns? In other words, these are the things that really need to be looked at before we call this the the wonder the drug, drug of mental health. Right. 
Um, I think it has to be the safety data. The safety data is one that most psychiatrists will have the concerns about. Um, you know, obviously it is anesthetic and uh, uh, it is does have some potential.